Aliens always fascinates us. Yes. What aspect of it? See, uh, this is a very interesting question. Alien we call our intelligent creatures, living things, sometimes more intelligent than us or not that much intelligent than us. See, we call ourselves an evolved creature, no? You know everything, you know how to communicate, technology is all with us. But just imagine just 100 years back, you are nothing. You are not having these microphones, these cameras, these lights, the communication systems, the television, nothing was there, just 100 years back. Our history is not 100 years. Our history is millions of years. The whole human race evolved over millions of years. But in the last 100 years, you achieved all of this to talk about going space and talking about aliens, etc. Just imagine there is another civilization out there which is just 200 years behind you. Mm. They are very good, but they don't have these technologies. Mm. Just otherwise you imagine there is another civilization which is 1,000 years ahead of you. 1,000 years is nothing in the cosmic scale. You know, you understand that. So they will be so evolved. In 100 years, you can make this much of pr progress. Just imagine in next 100 years, where will you be? Or in, assume in the next 1,000 years, where will you be in terms of the progress of technology? So then a society or evolution or a alien system, which is 1,000 years progressive than you, will be always here. They must be listening to your podcast. Right away. <laughs> Yeah. And they know what we are. And they will treat you like a earthworm. For us, we are nowhere. So I always believe that there is alien around us, much be much evolved. Because we are not the one that has come in the recent times. We were we were the very recent origins of you know, life form. Possibly there are origins of life and much evolved life everywhere in the universe. No doubt about it. I'm loving speaking to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I'm talking to a big brother who thinks in a similar way about aliens, about <laughs> extraterrestrial life and science. Yes. The thing is often when one speaks about these kind of topics, uh, you're rejected by large sections of society because as one grows up in the world, you're told to kill off your inner child. But I feel that that's very important for the sake of imagination, creativity and therefore your work. Because uh, there's a difference between being scientistic and scientific. Scientific helps you discover the unknown. Scientistic makes you reject the unknown. <laughs> Maybe that's a good definition. <laughs> uh, but let's let's actually speak about this alien situation, sir. How come UFOs are only spotted in America and South America? That's where you hear most of it. See, many a times these type of observations are much more feasible in the northern latitudes, southern latitudes. See, you know, equatorial region are always cloudy. If you look at uh, uh, Africa, India, or the South Asian, all those nations are in the equator. The European, Northern European and American are in the Northern, equa Northern latitudes. And on the Southern latitude, you don't have any nation other than Australia. Mm. Gotcha. So, you, if any events of this nature, especially the, the events in the sky where there is, uh, for example, auroras, you are able to see in the Northern side. The solar uh, related if effects are mostly seen in the northern side. Even the cyclones and other activities are more on the other sides, not, not on the equator. Equator has a different climatic conditions and mostly it is covered. The sky is mostly dark, not blue. If you go to US, you will see the sky to be more bluer than in India. Mm. It's not due to pollution alone. It's due to various the, the content of water vapor in there and many things. So this is scientific. Right. Now, there is non-scientific reason. <laughs> Americans have a nature to detect so many things all around mm. and make a story out of it. Mm. And and many of the UFO stories are more mostly fabricated stories, not the real stories. Many of them are. Yeah. Many but some of them might be true. Maybe true. Because I can't comment on it because I have not seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think our planet is visited by extraterrestrials? Absolutely. No doubt about it. In my, my, my conscience says I don't have a proof. You're the chairperson of ISRO, sir. Yeah. I'm telling you I, I, it, it comes from out of my earlier statement that there are aliens out in the universe. Aliens means living systems are there, cultures are there in other part of this universe. Then they would have definitely visited us if they are ahead in technology than us. Say 1,000 years, 10,000 years ahead. 10,000 years again is also minuscule time scale in the evolution of the universe. Just imagine a a, a society which is 10,000 years ahead in technology compared to us, where will they be? They will be frequently coming and going out of Earth without ever we knowing it. It's the equivalent of us keeping lions in a zoo. <laughs> yeah. Right? We yeah. are the lions in the zoo for them. 
Precisely. Like yes. a planet is the zoo. Precisely. Yes. Do you think that they would be benevolent or malevolent? In either way, I will be happy never to be in touch with them. I will really? tell you why. Yes. There is a reason. See, the the biology is such that we are, we are evolved out of a common biology that connects every living creature on the surface of earth whether it is plant whether it is bacteria whether it is fish or animal and we are one and the same you look at the genomics you will understand this one and the same there is no nature which is a protein which is different in nature in on, on the surface of earth everything evolved out of single possible life form so we are all connected in some manner Where, but suppose something that evolved in another planet would have been synthesized in an entirely different manner it may not have the similar genome structure it may not have the similar protein structure and it is utterly dangerous to for all two life forms to come in contact with each other the moment it contact with each other something has to overtake the other this is the nature of the life okay one will not allow the other one to survive it has to be overtaken and destroyed so unless they have a conscience about this okay they realize these two are different and we need to remain disconnected in terms of the body or the chemic chemistry of it and keep that apart and work together to find a solution to for us to meet each other not at the level of the mind and the thought but in the level of the body if that doesn't happen it will cause destruction either to them or to us basically they might be carrying some kind of diseases which i'm not can... talking in terms of disease it it's in terms of the way in which we live the 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 form of the body the, our blood our way we ox for example oxygen we breathe oxygen what is the guarantee oxygen is the gas that they need for us for them to live we mm. don't know in fact i have seen a science fiction novel in which they breathe methane in mm. one planet there is another and they float on the air with a huge balloon on them there was a nasa documentary on it so such forms are possible and they they come in contact with us it will be extremely dangerous for us or we in contact with them will be dangerous for them okay do you believe in any of these theories like uh, the lizard people or the anunnaki which say that probably they've taken human form and they are with us right now on this planet <laughs> because if if they are 10000 years ahead of us yeah. they would have accounted for even this uh, biological problem possible possible they would have found out found out a solution i don't have a solution today to make these two work together but they would have already found out a solution we just two lions talking to yeah. each other right now <laughs> those are the human beings outside the cage true 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 yeah we can talk like that <laughs> do those scientists at isro talk about extraterrestrial life to each other there are many people in isro who are fascinated by all of this so whenever we in free time evenings when we converse in free times possibly we talk about all of this yes okay yeah especially with young, my younger colleagues i spend a lot of time mm-hmm.